So, I think now we are live is streaming, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, last speaker of the day, Michael Gill, uh, is uh, gonna tell us something about low frequency variability. So, related topic to what we just heard, but from an angle of uh, topological. Uh, a topological angle. So please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for having uh, accommodated uh, my talk after the failure to reach Reading on time due to some strike in the Netherlands. And uh, I'm terribly sorry that I meet up they couldn't join us. But, well, yeah. Okay. Yes. So, um, uh, this is basically uh, work of uh, uh, Gisela Chaho and Denise Shamahella in Buenos Aires and Yanis Bausch, who uh, did an internship, obviously got a, a master's degree in physics and uh, did an internship of a few months with me, which we continued through the summer, and uh, you'll see some of his results. And uh, I'm here to present uh, this work. So there are all sorts of symbols. This is in the University of Buenos Aires, and this is the Ecole Armand, which is now part of this entity, uh, Paris Science and Letter, and uh, UCLA and St. Hess, and this is a PPS project that has had already a number of acknowledgments uh, here. And if anything sounds interesting, there's more to be found on these websites. I apologize to not be able to specifically name all the collaborators who over the years have helped me uh, uh, know and understand whatever I do today. And some of them are in this room. And it's a pleasure to say hello to them. Okay, so Henri Poincaré and the topology of chaos, this is actually a slide that was brought together during the similar one trimester or quarter meeting on math, the climate and the environment in the fall of uh, 2019 at the Institut Henri Poincaré. Uh, basically, deterministic care, you know, many of which I was very surprised when there was a centennial meeting of the AGU where there was a special issue of Earth and space science to find out that many meteorologists actually believe that Ed Lorenz came up with deterministic chaos. But to uh, most other people, uh, physicists and mathematicians, deterministic chaos theory starts with Henri Poincaré's study of the stability of the solar system and the three body problem in the method of the He also clearly stated that the weather was similarly affected by sensitive dependence on initial conditions on page 69, chapter Le Hazard of Science and Method. He moreover built on a few earlier results of Raymond, Betty, and Lerdan to create the field of algebraic topology by introducing homology groups that were what are called analysis sequence, the first volume of the journal de l'école technique. So the work described herein will combine these two strands of Poincaré's heritage. Incidentally, some of you might know that uh, the last Abel medal was given to Dennis Sullivan for his combining dynamical system theory with algebraic topology. So the time to pick up these two strands and you know, bring them together is clearly come. Okay, so introduction and motivation over the last decade, it has become increasingly obvious that a good framework for climate studies on the decade to century time scale is a theory of non-autonomous and random dynamical systems. See work by Pete Ashwin, Mikhail Shukrun, Ulrike Feudel, Yours Truly, Chris Jones, Valerio, Thomas Steele, and quite a few others. So far, relatively little thought has been given to apply this theory to the shorter time scales of 10 to 100 days, often called intraseasonal or subseasonal. Still, these scales of atmospheric low frequency variability in other words, basically longer than the lifetime of uh, our clinic eddies, you know, weather, and shorter than uh, uh, 
I mean, basically, the length of a sigma affected by subgrid scale noise, as well as by anthropogenic and natural forcing on various time scales, such as ENSO effects on interannual time scales at the mid latitude weather. Um, I have some references that I couldn't include in the list at the end on the slide itself. So, Stefan Van Itzel with Nathan de Maillet and myself. Extra, uh, published this last year, a paper on extratopical low frequency variability with ENSO forcing, I used all the covered models on study James is the DOI. So, you know, uh, there's an attempt at getting to this, but it's not as strongly pursued as this stuff up here. So hence, introducing the concept of methods of NDS and IDF theory to NFE should help medium range prediction. And this is what this workshop is supposed to be about. So we summarize here very briefly some of the main features and unknowns of atmospheric NFV and some novel ideas and methods of IDF theory in the light of the derived topology. Okay, so the outline is atmospheric NFV, the general circulation, dynamical systems, and comparative climatology. Uh, what I call waves versus particles in that review paper with uh, uh, Andy Robertson in the PNAS in 2002. In other words, oscillatory versus episodic description of this LSB, NFV. And then I'm coming to the algebraic topology, which is really the new stuff here homology groups and topology of chaos, random attractors, LoRa, which we've heard about quite a bit, and its counterpart for the Rossler system. Uh, uh, random attract of the Rossler system or all. So I'll talk a little bit about topological pivot points, sudden changes in the homology groups, or oh, sorry, that should be uh, plural groups and early warning signals. I will report just on the start on that and the usual end with concluding remarks and the other. Okay, so we're starting, we're starting right away with this. So this is actually out of a meeting which Valerio, I think, uh, was a part of. Yeah. Okay, diversity of planetary circulation results in a solar system and beyond with Lazouche, March 2017. Mm -hmm. Circulation regimes for the hitchhiker through the galaxy, hitchhiker through the galaxy is this book and it's commonly referred to as HPG2. Okay. Um, so the general circulation of the atmosphere, what is there to explain? Now, you know, a part of the uh, media propaganda of certain colleagues is that we know everything about the climate and now all that's left is to act. I agree with the latter part of this thing, okay? but there's a lot to do about acting. I do not agree that we know everything. So, you know, this is just a very schematic view of the general circulation of the, uh, of the atmosphere of Earth. Why doesn't the Hadley Salon Earth extend to the poles like on Venus? Why is the mid latitude circulation more highly variable than the tropical one? So, this is something that I sort of looked at with Stefan and Jonathan. What is the whole of topography, both mechanical, actual mountains, and thermal, Lancy contrast on mid latitude variable? And this is just uh, what I call dynamical systems and comparative climatology. This is a, an idealized version of the regime diagram for um, uh, the uh, uh, differentially heated rotating annulus. You know, this is the logarithm of uh, the Taylor number, and this is the logarithm of what I call the height number. It's usually called the thermal Rossby number, but it has nothing to do with Rossby. So basically each one of these lines is a line along which you change the rate of rotation of the annulus, maintaining other things constant. And uh, these are uh, essentially um, uh, boundaries of distinct regimes. This is a simple Raspi wave regime. This is a vacillation regime. This is quasi-geostrophic turbulence. And it shows our Earth is here, Mars is here, Venus is up there, and this is tight. Okay, so this is out of a review paper in astronomy and geophysics. Uh, uh, which we hold for the 80th anniversary of Helmut Tide, studying a lot of this stuff. Okay, so you know, waves versus particles. So uh, this is a very old uh, slide of mine. There's a better version of this in the paper that we wrote with Andreas Roth and Andrew Robertson, and um, ah, one more person in this volume uh, on uh, S2S uh, predictability. 
either regimes, but slow phases of the oscillation. So here is your, you know, this Frank is what you showed us, you know, uh, the PNA, the reverse PNA, which is called negative phase, and the block on the node. Okay. So this goes back at least 20 years. Okay, so this is blocked and zonal just as by the slow phases of an oscillation. Are the oscillations, but instabilities of particular equilibria, which was the case in the PhD thesis of Anand Graf published in Jazz in 85. How about both chaotic itinerancy, uh, uh, Hisaito and Masakimoto? How about neither? Null hypothesis. This is sort of Dick Lindsay. You know, there's nothing nonlinear to talk about. Everything is just phases of linear stuff. Okay, so, and then it's all due to right noise, which was published independently in 76 by both Klaus Hasselmann, as we all know, but also Mary Mitchell, Cotelia Research, et cetera. Okay, so, you know, we're still there, uh, but maybe this one is a particularly plausible one. Okay, so now onto algebraic topology. Uh, Okay, I won't take too much of this, but just give you a taste of it. Some of you know already more, some of you know less. The search for something computable to identify topological properties, in other words, those that are invariant to stretching and bending and stuff like that, allows to turn a topological problem into an algebraic problem. So you have to understand that this is very different from what's called usually general topology or point set topology, okay, which is deals with things like continuity and differentiability and limits, da, da, da. Homology seeks to make a distinction between topological spaces by determining the number of non-equivalent n-holes that contain or n designates the dimension essentially what is an n-hole. This is a zero cell. This is a one cell. These are two kinds of two cells. And a lot of the computational effort goes into this having minimal descriptions of these holes. Okay, so this just gives you details of how you do such things, but I don't have the time to go into that. So an oriented cell complex is a simplified stru uh, structure, uh, such as a connectivity map of the cylinder. Is, uh, you know, what about the difference aside from the cells? There's also a mutation. So what about the difference between a standard strip, a cylinder, and a nebulous strip? So again, the zero group is just connectivity. Both of them are connected. H1 uh, is, uh, is essentially one hole, okay? And then, however, the difference is that these, the two sides are, are, have the same direction, while in this case, they have opposite directions. So here there's no torsion, and here there's torsion. So orientability chains allow one to identify torsions in an oriented cell complex. Now, what about the connection to chaos? So this basically is taken out of uh, the famous review paper of uh, Robert Gilmore in Modern Reviews of, uh, sorry, Reviews of Modern Physics. So this is a time series. This is a bedding projection onto a plane. And this is a simplified structure of the flow, okay, which shows the holes. Use topology to understand the flow dynamics. So we do the reconstruction of the state space by the method of delays, and we get a branch manifold. So really, the, the difference, I should say that there's a lot of algebraic topology around these days, but the methods used in classifying statical structures are essentially based on the idea of persistent homologies that have nothing to do with dynamics. And furthermore, I'm not very good at very large number of points. So uh, the idea of really patterning uh, a, such a construct on a branch manifold goes back to the PhD thesis of Denise Shamarella in 1921. Uh, uh, sorry, 1931, I mean 19, 2001, 1999 and 2001. Okay, so now chaos topology, the dynamics on a deterministic attractor can be compactly described as a limit of a semi-flow on a branch manifold. Its topological description encodes the invariant structure of the attractor phase space, describes a topological organization of the trajectory of the attractor. So this is a well-known picture of just a point cloud of the 
usual deterministic stranger factor of the Lorentz uh, system. And this is the branch manifold that corresponds to it. You see all of these are cells which have been constructed. And there is essentially a to one torsion and constructing a uh, branch manifold from data amounts to approximating the color of points of phase space by Euclidean's closed sets, essentially disks and their generalizations for higher dimensions, forming a cell complex and then identifying the branch manifold in homology groups and torsions associated with the cell complex. Okay, so uh, here is, uh, so we call this Brahma branch manifold analysis of the two homologies, uh, but uh, uh, this goes back to this work of Shamahela and uh, Mindlin. So again, this shows in greater detail how you uh, get out of the cloud of points, the uh, cell complex. So this says it's connected. This says it has two poles. And this says there's nothing more. Okay. So application now to random attractors. So from deterministic, we're now proceeding to pull back attractors of a random dynamic system. Okay, how about some real stuff, chaotic and random to address truly coupled climate human behavior and climate change? So I'm back to the longer time problem. I'm not really talking yet about the uh, uh, low frequency variability to address truly couple climate human behavior and climate change. Important step is to examine time dependent forcing. Proper framework is I told you. Motivation was uh, this remarkable uh, uh, video called The Day in the Life of the Lorentz Model Random Attractor, LOA. So it's a uh, uh, shorter uh, and poor resolution version appears as a supplementary information in this paper. And the high resolution version, which many of you have seen already, is a video movie on Mikael's uh, uh, site at UCLA. So LOA evolves in time. Does this evolution include changes in the topological sense? So, okay, so here's a stochastically perturbed. So uh, Lorentz model with multiplicative noise because in each equation the Dina uh, process is multiplied by x, y, or z. Okay. And for the usual parameter values that you've seen so many times uh, in different places, and you can find, I don't know how many realizations, including programs for doing it yourself on the web. So a uh, random attractor uh, in R3 is obtained for a fixed realization of the noise and is associated with a particular time instant. So we call these a snapshot. To construct a random attractor, a lot of initial particles are used. Each point can be associated to a value of the invariant measure uh, for which you need really to do kernel, de kernel density estimation which is not written in the paper, but is incorrect. It's written in the program. Okay, Low, uh, new values corresponding to the less populated regions, you know, all of the random attractor, uh, you know, for the PDF. So uh, the figure here corresponds to a projection onto the YZ plane of the sample method new, in yellow, according to this, one billion of initial particles. Okay, so topology, while the attractor associated with classical deterministic model is trained for fixed in time, this one is driven by multiplicative noise and random changes in time. So these are successive snapshots. You see that uh, there is the same filamentation as in the deterministic attractor. Okay, but there are some very, you can see that the invariant measure is advected on the, by the deterministic flow, but there are surprises like this Artesian fountain. Okay, and so we describe the temporal evolution of its topological structure by this branch manifold. And uh, it is extended from the methodology standard to deterministically chaotic flows. So, for instance, Denise has done stuff for speech patterns uh, and a lot of and fluid dynamics, of course. Uh, usual fluid dynamics of physical space, again, can go. Uh, you don't need to, to memorize this or copy it. If you just do Chacon and UCLA, uh, you are going to be there very soon, okay? 
And uh, so we're interested in characterizing the topology of the most populated regions of the core cloud. We select the threshold for this. Uh, and so this is the point cloud, and uh, this is the same thing after the application of the threshold. Now, uh, up to here, a lot of you here have seen this already. So this is uh, Yannis's contribution to this, the stochastically perturbed Russell 76 model at the standard values for the spire. For the wrestler, there are two kinds of attractors actually for two sets, two, there are two canonical sets. This is the one for the spiral one. And uh, those who are not familiar, well, we've seen earlier, I forget whether it was yesterday or not, to the earlier this morning, I think, uh, also, oh, Stefano, who was, who was not, who was not here, not a wrestler, I forget. Okay, uh, so uh, this is the original paper. Uh, it was actually influenced by the Lorenzo tractor, uh, but then it was found that there are chemical reactions that uh, can be described in this way. And there's a very nice article on Scolopedia, which you can look up with uh, Christian Letelier and Oscar Weston. Okay, so topological tipping points. These are sudden changes in the homology group. And uh, we know that they're sudden, and I'm going to show you that. And how to get early warning signals, that's sort of a start. We should be on time to submit uh, by the end of the month the discussion we should. Okay, okay. Uh, we're doing really well at this point. Uh, so this is the older stuff from Laura that it was published in a paper Chao et al, including Kael. Um, in chaos uh, uh, earlier this year. Uh, anyhow, these you can see, these are the uh, point clouds and these are the complexes constructed uh, by Brahma. So you see, you go from three holes to two holes and then to four holes. And you do so in very small intervals. And I'm going to show you that we have much smaller intervals, actually. Uh, this is just another example, which was colored by hand. But OK, you see that this is half the steps that we had before. And again, the number of holes changes dramatically. How can we achieve this whole tracking? OK. Uh, OK, sudden changes in early one signals. So there are two ways of doing this. Oh, but wait a second. I haven't given you the right version. There oh, no, I forgot to show you. Sorry, I forgot to show you the video. Can you please show the, the video? OK, so you are immediately going to see that this is much more three-dimensional than Laura. OK, so Laura was essentially done by projecting onto two dimensions because it wasn't that different. Here we're having distinct problems with the have to do thermal estimation in three dimensions and there are various other things. Anytime you apply any methodology to something else, you get some new thing. Let's go back to the yeah. Okay, so uh, sorry, I've gone past this without showing you the video. So, okay, so there are essentially two approaches that we are taking in order to uh, um, uh, get these early warning signals. We look at the distance between two snapshots at time t at t plus delta t as a linear convex combination of two things. F is the Euclidean distance between the very centers of these two holes, okay? And there was the case idea, but okay. And G is a Wasserstein distance, which provides a rigorous way to measure quantitative, uh, quantitative difference between two probability distributions over a region. So using singular value decomposition, we take the first principle direction of a whole's contour if we find the axis that passes through its value center. So what we do is we measure this distance, we bring the two value centers together, we rotate so they are aligned, they have the same leading um, uh, leading principle direct, uh, direction or uh, vector. 
Uh, and we define uh, the mu as a height of the dirt pile at time t at point x using the Cartesian coordinates so defined. Okay. Well, here they are still shown as distinct, but really what we are doing, we are trying to measure this. Okay. But uh, in fact, uh, what we are doing now uh, is a little bit different, and I'm going to mention uh, this in a moment um, on the concluding remarks. So what I'm trying to do better understand low frequency variability, actually atmospheric and oceanic in the ocean, uh, the characteristic time of uh, galvanic instability is not just a few days, but it is uh, much longer. So low frequency variability in the ocean is uh, many months, uh, but not many years. Uh, so the counterpart of the 10 to 100 days is a little bit longer, but it's the same issue in principle. Well, uh, better understanding can help a prediction given both constant and anthropogenically changing climate. The evolution of a non autonomous or random effect in time can be characterized by its topological transformations or TPPs. They can be described in terms of poles that split or merge via Brahma. And uh, the um, uh, Gisela and Denise published uh, just very recently. Another paper in Chaos with Christian Letelier, whose name was also mentioned here, on including the torsion in a more explicit way. So they call this a templex. Okay, so to track these sudden changes and properly define early, city, early warning signals for TTPs, we need a robust criterion for jumps in the number of poles. One way to do so is the one that I showed you after changes in the judiciously weighted sum of Euclidean distance between the very centers of the two holes and that's the distance between the probability distributions of these holes. And the other one is topological, which really just has to do with the templex. And I don't have the time to present it to you, but this is the one that I think will do the trick rather quickly. So topological, it's again, everything becomes purely topological rather than including the metric component and track changes in the templex. So this is work in progress and so, is a transfer of these inside the models of intermediate complexity. This is supposed to be a banana on which you can slip. Okay. <laughs> so, and I'm just leaving you with a bibliography. So these are the two papers, you know, this is, sorry, this was last year, noise-driven topological changes in chaotic dynamics. And this is one that was just uh, published uh, very recently this year. And this is the one that uh, much of this goes back to, etc. And uh, well, here are some uh, early, uh, earlier references to the topology of chaos and the whole unstable periodic orbits and uh, etc. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Uh, I have seen the uh, related presentation. This time was much clearer for me as well, actually. And so I, I feel I've learned more comments, questions. Stefan. Yeah, I like very much the, the analysis you, you did with the algebraic topology. It's really interesting. Could you apply that in a specially distributed system like the Kuramoto Shirashinsky equation? Or... Well, uh, again, the hope to that leads through reduction, which I don't have the time. You know, that's another talk. Okay. And of course, uh, as uh, Alberto Carassi said so well, you know, there's a lot of machine learning around and we need a dictionary to, you know, uh, we used to have this method of empirical model reduction, which worked very well, not just in capturing more behavior of more complicated models of data, but in real-time prediction, okay? We have used it in real-time prediction of ENSO for several years. And uh, the last time an assessment of progress in real-time ENSO forecasting was done by Tony Barnstein and Associates uh, at, uh, uh, um, at uh, the, I, uh, the IRI, the International Research Institute at Columbia Climate Risk Society. Uh, the method was competitive with the biggest big models. Of course, only so for something like SOI or minimum three. And then again, you have to translate that into details of other latitudes, et cetera. But uh, it's a 
taking down the method, and we're working now with Andreas Broad, who was also a partner and some other things, on applying uh, VAE, whatever VAE is, one of these MLDL methods uh, that uh, is uh, considered to be pretty good at things that move as opposed to just sit. Okay. So uh, I think that uh, it's feasible, but we haven't done it yet. And anybody who's interested, more than one. Okay, thanks. And uh, other comments or questions? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I mean, if, if I look at, at the pictures of the track, I mean, you, you see somehow that there's some kind of hierarchy of poles. No? I mean, yeah. some, some structures are stronger than others, but I mean, I don't know. Is there any way to capture that in, in uh, algebraic and topology? Framework? Well, of course. I mean, you know, uh, look, there, it, like in everything that you do, the, you know, everything worth doing takes a little bit of effort. And so I say uh, the a major obstacle, which is not at all surmounted by the popular methods of persistent homologies. I mean, you know, obviously my colleagues have you looked at those. And they are not good at it because they do not give you minimal descriptions, descriptions of holes. Okay. But I think that we now have that. And once you have that, well, they'll persist as long as they'll persist. You don't need to say more than that. You, know, you just need to see when they split or merge. Okay. And they last what they will last. You know, you might suspect that the small ones are more uh, fragile, but that's not necessarily so because clearly the holes around the convective uh, fixed points of, of LoRa are there to stay. Okay, yes. they are small and they are there. So you know it doesn't. It has to do with the underlying nonlinear deterministic dynamics, and it has to do with whatever. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, quite frankly, something that I didn't put down as a, as a question, but we do not, uh, you know, the, the two, uh, the two uh, uh, Portenias, uh, you know, uh, have done a lot of applications of Brahma to, to rail flows, okay, uh, in, in, in physical space, and it works very well. And, uh, but we haven't, what we don't have is really a good understanding of what exactly in physical space the topology reflects. Mm, yeah. Okay. So clearly these topological tipping points are much richer than other things because we know that there are critical transitions which are not just folds, you know, uh, uh, back to back saddle node bifurcations, not just half, not just this. Uh, you know, we have, for instance, a paper on which again Mikael was uh, the lead author in this book edited by uh, Tassos Tonis uh, from a conference in Rhodes, 30 years of nonlinearity in the geosciences, uh, with a very simple ENSO model where there were some critical transitions which were much more subtle. Okay. Uh, there was uh, fingering that uh, changed drastically. Uh, no. So uh, there is a hope that these uh, TTPs will capture things that are way more complicated, you know, uh, transitions between different chaotic regimes, etc., which are not currently described by, uh, uh, you know, uh, Pete Ashwood's uh, topological, uh, that's why uh, the um, uh, tipping points, you know, B, N, and R. Uh, so, uh, so this is there's now B, N, R, and T. <laughs> okay. We much prefer to wonderful uh, M, D, Chateau. No, no. It's the right like, number of C and no, K. The, the, the talk like, was like, I, you know, as, as you, you say, Dr. Michael, like, it was nice to see it, like, put it in the plain English, which is not easy, <laughs> um, this algebraic topology stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, uh, and I it, have a few more slides on the algebraic topology. <laughs> 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 no, it was like, and actually it occurred to me, like, well, during this talk, you know, when we look at the, the movie that is in the website, we can see that there is like sometimes the noise interacting with the nonlinearity, so that you know there is a shrinking of the attractor, which will come with 
like a merging of the roles. That you know, you mentioned that you have a, a new way of, of the niece, yeah. and, uh, and uh, they have a new way to like. Uh, um, you know, this was really, the, the option. Yeah, it was really a eureka point because we were struggling with this metric definition. No, no, I'm not talking about the metric. I'm talking yeah, about no, like, no, it's a tech I mean, yeah, that, 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 because like like when there is a whole merging, before that there is a torsion of the attractor. So I'm just thinking if yeah. if you have like a new way now to compute this or quantify this torsion, that could be like also a way to anticipate maybe this. Method. Well, no, but that's that's really the idea. That that's really the idea that we are trying that we are trying to and it it uh, you know visualize uh, computing snapshots uh, you know as as we are talking here. <laughs> okay. So, right, and you see also this like shrinking of the attractor for the Roa? Uh, for Roa, oh, I mean, look, this guy, all he was doing was an internship. As you remember, it was two years ago, there was a guy who was a normal young physician who never got to, who never got even to integrate the SDEs. Uh, Yanis, on top of everything else, he applied Milstein rather than Euler Maruyama, which gives him a smoother Roa. Okay, so that's already one of the things, and uh, I I don't know whether for the end of this month we'll have the thing for both Laura and Laura, but we'll have it for for Laura, I think. <laughs> because really, as I say, the key is having the minimal description of the holes, which is not given by all these specific pH algorithms on the web. Okay, they're totally deficient. They're not, you know, I mean. They are, they are good at what they are good at, which is, you know, uh, classifying uh, uh, friend and foe tanks and various other things like that. <laughs> and, uh, on these <laughs> note of friend and foe tanks, and I would like to ask a, a question, not about tanks, fortunately. But, uh, <laughs> no, the, so, I mean, when you, I just had an idea, probably it's quite trivial. So are these all associated, it could be associated to some sort of the composition of the flow in something that's like gradient-like and the rest. So they have, these have to do with rotation, I mean, my intuition. So, you know, if you have a hole and the mass rotates around it. So to me, I don't know, it just, uh, as you know, like there, there have been analysis at least of the Lorenz 63, in the, mm -hmm. the, this sort of, uh, not exactly the Helmut's the composition, but the one that people would like to do. I mean, uh, oh, uh, I see what you so, mean. You that, know, the uh, divergence, yeah. divergent yeah. versus rotational, or as yeah. it's called in non GFD Plus solenoidal. Yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of a solenoidal. Cauchy, Cauchy yeah, it's a G, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, because I mean, easy. this cannot cause, of course, this yeah. case cannot cause any hole. Yes. Because this is yeah, associated yeah. with the Lyapunov function. Yeah, so you're saying it has to be the rotational component. Yeah, that's the, my. And then if you had multiplicative noise, it can change dramatically yes. this stuff. So I don't know, I just had the, this thought. Maybe it's rare. I, mean, I, I, I think it is. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, any other questions or comments? If not, we break up. But before we break up, I leave the floor. To Jeroen, I think, who has to announce the working groups, the very hard working groups, extremely hard working groups, with the rapporteurs as well, right? <laughs> Michael, and thanks all the speakers. Yeah. And uh, yeah.